there, everyone. I'm Mitch Ashley. And I'm Alan Schimmel. And you're listening to Security Boulevard Chats. Chats. Absolutely. Alan, good to be back on the podcast trail. On the, I feel like we're on the road again. We're doing on our On the road, like Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. Yeah. yeah I don't know how many people remember with... that. Maybe we should look for a horse track. I don't know. <laughs> you crooner. <laughs> doing um, our USO tour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're really dating ourselves. Yeah, yeah. we are. <laughs> um, easy. Oh, easy on that one. Okay, but Mitch, I'll it's good on. to be back on the podcast for those who have been listening, you know, we relaunched Security Boulevard podcast and the DevOps Chats podcast. They're separate. And um, you can follow DevOps Chats uh, and Security Boulevard Chats on any of your favorite podcasting platforms or on TechStrong TV. Mm -hmm. I think we also play them on DevOps.com and SecurityBoulevard.com. Yeah. They play on there and uh, Cloud Native Now is podcast and right. a lot of great and stuff. And Digital CXO podcast, Textual AI, AI podcast. Yeah. There's a new one coming up. We'll tell you about it next week. And um, and of course, our uh, CISO talk, our uh, uh, Tech Strong Women and DevOps Unbound podcast, mm -hmm. as well as Tech Strong, Tech Strong Unplugged which our own Natan Solomon does, and it's really aimed at, you know, kids coming out of college, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how they get in that first gig in tech. Absolutely. Great stuff. Very Got a lot cool. of, whether you're security, software, cloud, cloud native. AI, whatever, whatever you're AI. it is, we got you covered here at TechStrong. Yeah, we've got your podcast. Well, so let's let's chat a little bit. You'd picked out a couple uh, things on. Yeah, I wanted to go board. over a couple of things, Mitch. Um, one article is by our friend Richie Jennings. For those of you who may not know, Richie's over in the UK, and he does a blog watch column, I think once a week, maybe more. And in it, he kind of picks out a, a timely topic that's being covered around the web and has excerpts of what people have blogged about on that topic. So the one I, I chose for this week actually just ran last week, right? Mm -hmm. And it was the U.S. will fight Russian disinformation, hacks and leaks, and deep fakes. Oh my! Oh Richie my. has Richie has a <laughs> what's the word? A Serbic sense of humor. Yes. Um, sometimes people get rubbed the wrong Google way. That. Whatever. Yeah, that, means. that was a good word, Mitch. I pulled that it. Was a, that was a I pulled word. it out of there. Yeah, that was one of my <laughs> SAT word. or LSAT words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anyway, though, but the point is someone over at the State Department, you know, made the announcement so we could all sleep well at night that the U.S. government and State Department will be fighting Russian and Chinese uh, disinformation campaigns using AI and not that may try to influence or skew our elections. Well, thank God. Goodness for that! You you um, sleep under the blanket of protection that I offer, little yeah, Jack. That I provide. You <laughs> can handle the truth. Um, <laughs> oh, but but seriously, look, this is a very serious topic. All oh, kidding absolutely. aside, right? Unfortunately, I don't think the U.S. State Department is equipped at all to combat this. Um. But that being said, what, I mean, Mitch, what do we have to do to in, safeguard the integrity of our elections? It is, it is a perplexing question because our use of social media, our use our, our other parties wanting to influence mainly Russia, but I'm sure there's other actors, China, China and others who are creating this information. There's really no good way to tell, is that true? Is that really true? Other than doing your research, right? Whether going to try you trust sources you trust, because hopefully they're accurate and Snopes and things like that. Uh, it seems to me though that they're the State Department of doing this. They're labeling it, right? They're saying this is I don't know what words they're going to use, but let's say misinformation. Um, you know, well, that's the government labeling or categorizing, saying what's fake and what's not. And, and who's that's going to build a what lot their of trust? Biases. Yeah, I think all those conspiracy theorists will really appreciate, you know, the government. Well, what was interesting, <laughs> Mitch, is, uh, you know, there was the argument in the Supreme Court last week around the two state laws from Florida and Texas mm -hmm. trying to regulate the social media companies 
in terms of free speech and what you know what they can censor or not or label or mm -hmm. what have you and the and the supreme court justices seem to be against the two state laws yeah but one of the distinctions they made as to why they were against it is the social media companies are not the government right mm -hmm. the government has a i hadn't heard that different burden regarding freedom of speech than a private company does they're supposed to have the so public now you're going to get the state department labeling stuff and they have to respect freedom of speech yeah quite frankly a private entity does it florida and texas and i'm sorry i took us down a legal angle here, no, no, but it's fine. florida and texas were making the argument that these social media companies are akin to a public utility and that therefore they had to get treated similar to a government entity in respecting freedom of speech and the justices from at least the oral arguments we haven't seen the written opinion but from the oral arguments the justices did not buy into that they're still private companies i don't see how the state department does that without running afoul of freedom of speech I mean, everybody has to abide by it. Well, you're right in terms of a public forum and the government has to support that. Um, so let me ask, if I label something, you say I'm the State Department and I label what you just produced on Facebook, whatever platform, and I say, that's fake. What Alan just posted is fake. Is, is that infringing on your free speech right? Yeah, it sure is. I'm yeah. marching off the court and saying you've infringed on my... Exactly. Freedom of speech. Yeah, you're now, telling the State me. Department will say, no, I let you say it. I just said that it's bullshit. Exactly. I mean, it seems to me that doesn't, I can't see this either solves anything for that reason or builds trust in the information we're reading because the government has said it's, it's yep. valid. But enact. Mitchell, just because this may not be a successful solution doesn't diminish the problem. No, I saw another all. report this week that just between Russia and China, approximately 75% of all your malware and this kind of stuff uh, comes from Russia and China. Mm -hmm. You know, at some level, freedom of speech or not, you got to start thinking, hey, I want to close my southern border to immigration. I want to close my electronic border to nonsense. Mm -hmm. Right? If 75% well, of... Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Sense now, me. then we could all do what they do in China, which is run VPNs to get around that great wall of firewall of China. But mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, it brings up a real problem mitch we got an election coming up it's probably going to be another close one right because how fast can 80 year olds run yeah <laughs> yeah Both that'll be a long race <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know is is interference from foreign governments with and we didn't even have ai deep fakes last time we're gonna have a lot more this time mm -hmm. Is that going to be enough to, to tip a state or two? Because that may be all it takes. Well, and not that the Russia would problem. follow our laws, but uh, sorry, I didn't mean to step on you there. Okay. <laughs> no, no. I heard, I think yesterday that either the Senate or the House, probably Senate, was a few folks were working on a law that says you can't use or you must disclose the use of AI in any political ads. Yeah, if like and when that. we outlaw guns, only guns, only outlaws will have guns, right? I'm sure the Russians, you know, brought to you by Putin. Hello, or, comrade. Mm -hmm. Please be advised. <laughs> this is a Netsky, you know, AI. <laughs> now get back in Dos line for your right, breath. Right, Doskadonia, whatever the heck it is. But <laughs> your, um, your I hear you. is getting cold. Oh, it's already yes, cold. Yes. <laughs> you know, it, it's ludicrous. I mean, so what's the answer? The answer is the same thing we've been trying to come to terms and grapple with, you know, since social media really burst on the scene, I would say in 2004, 2008, maybe between 2008 and 2012. Mm -hmm. um, you know, quite frankly, I think actually President Obama was probably the first political campaign that really leveraged mm -hmm. social media. Right, mm -hmm. I think John McCain and was data. a little out of, yeah. you know, Sarah Palin was watching Russia from her porch and Barack Obama was all over Twitter. Mm -hmm. And um, 
but so even though that was 2008, so that was, you know, four, eight, four, 16 years ago, mm -hmm. as a society, the world, not just the U.S., has not, has not been able to separate truth from bull, mm -hmm. fact from fiction, quality from nonsense when it comes to social media posting. Mm -hmm. And what we've done instead, at least in the U.S. and maybe the EU a little bit, is we've, we, we were relying on the Twitters, Facebooks, LinkedIn's, Google Apples of the world mm -hmm. to kind of filter for us mm -hmm. by taking out stuff that was really, and they weren't doing a great job, but they were probably taking the worst of the worst down. Now, of course, you know, that's one of the reasons Elon Musk bought Twitter X and drove it to hell, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if those companies aren't the ones to regulate it, we got to assume it's never going to be regulated. And the, and the real answer is educate users to do a better job of separating fact from fiction. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's probably going to take, you know, the generations coming up now, these AI native folks and, and the, the Gen Digital Z. Natives. I think the Gen Z still don't get it. But it may take a generation, Mitch. For people to be able to, you know, do we this right. We almost need that A-bomb moment of something so big happening with fake information. Maybe it's an election, maybe it's not. Um, but, so, you know, I've said that too about security and ransomware and stealing data. Some data will be big enough that it'll have, you know, that seismic kind of event. And that hasn't happened. But I don't know. It, it is a perplexing problem. I certainly don't have many answers more about what no. what to do to solve no. it even krebs remember he was on in in one of sure, our brian krebs brian he was on um he was on one of the news programs i saw him and he basically said you have to go back and check the sources and do fact checking and let's see if who was saying it or if someone else can validate it that you trust essentially was it came back to. So you're going to, you're going to enter a world where you don't know if anything's true and you're going to have to have ways of validating what is and not what is. And I, I think, uh, unfortunately, I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah, I think so too. Right. I, I think, uh, you know, there are nation state actors, there are unscrupulous politicians and political movements you know, go back to Nazi Germany. They were the first, you know, they made propaganda a religion, mm -hmm. right? And Goebbels said, the bigger the lie, the more you say it, the more people will believe it. Yeah, the more often you say it. Yeah. And I, I, it's, it pains me to say this, but he's right, or they're right. And I, I you know, I mean, it's gotten to the point, Mitchell, where, like I, I don't, I don't believe ninety percent of what, and and I'm a easygoing person, I think, but I don't believe ninety percent of what I see online, whether it comes from those I identify with or those I don't. I'll go back and go look, just what Brian said to do. I'll go back and go look. Did you know, like Incredulous this week? The the Florida uh, Surgeon General said it's a parent's decision on whether kids who had been exposed to measles should come to school or not because mm -hmm. it's not up to us to tell a parent to vaccinate their child. So I read this and I said, this can't be true. This is fucking ridiculous. I went mm -hmm. away crazy. So I, I didn't repost it or say anything at first. I then went and I looked up. And I saw the video, and I saw the letter that was sent, and I saw multiple, multiple reports, all exactly the same. I said, oh, my God. I, You know, I would have thought for sure this is nonsense. But no, it's not nonsense. It's just Florida men. And, um, <laughs> you know, that's the world we live in. Just, you know, truth is stranger than fiction when it comes to Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, go figure. 
like the Saturday Night Live. Uh, I forgot who the host was, but there was a they're doing a skit on playing basketball, and the the guest would shoot and miss, and he he figured I'd gone to some course about all you have to do is say is that you did it. So he says, I did, I hit it. It it was good. I got a point for that, and they're all like. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <It's kind> yeah. of... <laughs> Go along with the flow. But, you know, I think for the sake of humanity and civilization, we need people who aren't going to go along with the yeah. flow. Yeah. But we're going to say, hey, wait a second here. Is this really true? Right? They're not They're not selling children out of some pizza shop in D.C. Yeah. Or whatever yeah. that conspiracy theory oh, was, child. right? Whatever. Yeah. Uh, pizza. So it, but... Um, I did have I did confirm something though. Social media was very helpful to me today. I confirmed something I always wondered. You know, in the original Star Trek, you remember when they were getting bombarded by, you know, whatever phasers or photon torpedoes from some, you know, the Rimulans or Klingons and everyone on the ship would be doing this and they'd be doing that and you know, uh -huh. doing that. Well, the, somebody posted a picture that showed the crew doing that and above it uh, someone had made a rocking chair that looked exactly like the Starship Enterprise, and the kid was, <laughs> was just pushing the whole Starship. Back. That's like, pretty funny. That's what that's what that was. No, that, that wasn't a deep fake or anything. No, no that was that was real. All. Not at all. That was okay, real. So, I'll yeah. tell you something I found <laughs> out on social media today that may blow your mind. Okay, and I saw it on a Facebook post. I didn't believe it. I went back. I googled everyone's name and pictures, and sure as heck, it was true. So, you know, Mitch, I'm a big Godfather movie fan. I oh, love yeah, the Godfather. You have a lot of quotes from the Godfather. Yeah. I, everything you need to learn in life, you can learn from watching the Godfather movies. Mm -hmm. And and, I, and like many of us, I'm also a Sopranos fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. One Amazing of the best series. TV shows ever. David Chase, you know, and, and uh, the whole... I mean, David Chase was the producer, but um, just the whole... The whole cast of Sopranos mm -hmm. um, and the writers and that, just the show's amazing. Um, but here's something that'll blow your mind. If you remember in Godfather 2, Hyman Roth, Sicilian messenger boy, he was called, mm -hmm. Johnny Orla, mm -hmm. right? Good old Johnny Orla knew this town like the back of his hand. He's an orange from our friend in Miami. <laughs> Johnny Orla is the act the actor who plays Johnny Euler is Uncle Junior in the Sopranos. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. Go Google it yourself. Check it out. I'm gonna have to look. I'm gonna have to I'm trying that to picture blew, that. that was that was a revelation <laughs> what we talk about here at Security Boulevard. But anyway, that was that was amazing to me. It, amazing. It is funny. When you watch the older films and TV shows and stuff, how many actors that are really famous you've gotten to know were like like you know babies? Recycled. <laughs> they're really young. They look like they're 14, yeah. 18 or something. Yeah. Like, wow, I didn't know they were acting back then. Of course, nobody knew. No, they blew were my mind. Blew my mind. That's anyway, amazing. Mitch, moving right, moving right along. <laughs> On to our next I'm, security topic. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is sort of a security topic. It's important to us. So, Mitch, you were there when we started the security bloggers meetup at RSA. I think it was 2003 or 2004. Yeah, yeah. sounds about right. And then in like 2004, there were like 12 2000, of us that went to that first one. It was not. Yeah, it wasn't a, maybe more than 12, but it was. It was Rich Mogul, I think Mike Rothman, Martin McKay, you, yeah. I, uh, a bunch of other folks. Yeah, but a um, small group of Michael us. Farnham was there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know, and then we started the Security Bloggers Network, which is a, alive and healthy as ever on Security Boulevard. It mm -hmm. represents probably Bone the majority strong. of the, more than the majority, a super majority of the stories on the boulevard come from the Bloggers Network. But... Blogging's not what it was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in 2004 and 2005. Today, many of us create security-related content, some by blogs and art, written articles, some by podcasts like this, some by videos, audio, um, various, you know, security creation, uh, security content creators. Mm -hmm. And... You know, and, and the highlight of the Bloggers Network was always the Bloggers Meetup at RSA Network every year, at yeah. RSA Conference every year, excuse me. 
And he's always Wednesday. No marketing zone. And we, what a great. Agilians used to be. Anyway. Agilians, and, yeah, yeah, until that closed. But, you know, the, the people who have been with, coming to that with us for 20 years, I mean, A, they're now giants in the industry, but mm -hmm. B, they're really good people that, you know, we've grown to love and, and uh, respect. Good friends. Um, but for the last couple of years, Mitchell, it, you know, we've made it sort of, it hasn't gotten its due because I didn't focus on it personally. The situation in San Francisco was hard to get a place to make it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and quite frankly, you know, here's to us and those like us, damn few left. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Sitting around so, the barrel playing checkers while, you know, yeah. what happened to our bloggers network when we were watching it? Remember when we used to blog? <laughs> so <laughs> I've, I've wanted blog. to revitalize it now for a couple of years and, and bring it forward to today's time. And, you know, it was actually, I spoke to Rich Mogul and Jennifer Leggio, two of the people who helped start the bloggers meet up with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, the idea was tossed around instead of calling it security bloggers network, maybe we call it security creators network, mm -hmm. SCN. And I love that idea because I think that's much more in, in, you know, engrossing what today's Whatever the medium content. is. Right? Yeah, doesn't matter yeah. what form, it's still yep. sharing ideas, communicating, advancing the knowledge base. Yep. And so I, I've wanted to do this, but I, I didn't want to just change the name to change the name. I wanted to wrap it around. So I also uh, been talking um, with Gianna from the Security Marketing Professionals mm -hmm. Society, or I think that's it. Yes. Um, about helping me because I want to bring a new, fresh audience in. Yeah. I want to bring to some of the younger people. I want to bring branch out, you know, the people who are creating content. And uh, again, she, we're talking about their help coming in, but I've been able to locate a place to do it at RSA. You know, Jack Daniels and, and a couple of the people used to do Tonga Con every year at the Tonga Room. I don't know if you remember right. it. Polynesian right. theme. They give out lays. Mitchell, mm -hmm. you and I had many a drink there over the years. I don't, I don't remember of any of that. I was there, but no, I don't remember. You were there. You were there. You probably lost something there. But <laughs> anyway. There for some podcasting equipment. I don't know what it was. <laughs> It wasn't there. It was the W. Oh, but anyway, I'm, I'm not going to rip that Band-Aid off the wound. Thank you let very my, much. We'll let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> okay. um, but anyway, oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, Jack's not doing Tonga Kong anymore. Jack's kind of retired. And mm -hmm. uh, my friend Jeff Mann suggested I call the Tonga Room. And I did. And I've been able to, it looks like, uh, lock down. I'm not going to take the whole room because I don't think we're going to have 450 people. Mm -hmm. But to take down a good portion of it to more than cover what we need. We'll have some good food, some good drinks, and uh, we're going to relaunch for RSA, the Security Bloggers Network, is the Security Creators Network, mm -hmm. and we're going to do our first Security Creators Network party. I don't think we're going to do awards this year, next year, we'll, but we'll Security Creators later, Network yeah. party at at it, and 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 to honor the heritage of Tonga Khan, we're going to try to take some of the essence of what made Tonga Khan such a great party as well. And um, Polynesian drinks? Well, the, that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, actually, <laughs> okay. Actually, actually, Mitch, I was going to throw it out to our audience. If oh, any okay. of you are Tonga Khan attendees or Tonga Khan helped with Tonga Khan sponsor, et cetera, write to us, reach out to me. Alan at DevOps, A L A N at DevOps.com. And and tell me what you liked best about Tonga Khan and what can we include in the security creators meetup that kind of honors that Tonga Khan heritage, being we're doing it in the Tonga room. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to get that in there. I think it'll be a nice touch, Mitch. You we know would. that. We would. Yeah. Are we gonna have sponsors because we've always had yes. sponsors? Are we doing? Uh, well, it makes it real hard to pay for these things without yeah, sponsors. I was gonna say, they, thank God we have sponsors because that's how we yeah. do it. So I'll, I'll be looking for sponsors. I one company was suggested. I'm reaching out. We'll be looking for more. Gianna and the 
Security uh, prof Marketing Professional Society hopefully will help with that as well. But there will be Eventbrite registrations and everything else. But we're back. We're back we're with back. our own show, not borrowing someone's venue, with our own party. It's going to be the Wednesday of security of RSA. Probably start around 5, 5.30, run till 7.30 or something like that. So people can go to their next parties and partake the party the night away. But I'm really pumped about it, Mitch. And, it, and it's not just the party at RSA. I think this will revitalize. Mm -hmm. There's 400 blogs or whatever in the bloggers network. But I want, I want more kinds of content, security-related content. And we're yeah. going to open the rolls up and, and bring people in with this. People's YouTube channels, their TikTok, their Everything. Instagram, their, yep. you know, maybe they're writing in a different form somewhere, somehow. You know, and it's to broaden the forms, but it's also, as you were saying, deepen the generational aspect of this, right? We've yeah. been doing this for a while. And there are folks yep. who are doing great work, you know, better than, you know, what we did, what we may have done. Yeah, you know, they're they're advancing it from where we are today, and we want to help help them have that voice, get that out there. Security, security creators network. That's what it's about. So That's we're fantastic. excited. Stay tuned for more information on that. Sounds Good really stuff. great. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. What other security stuff? Is there anything else on the docket for today, Mitch? I think, I th have we had everything? I think, oh, we, we talked a little bit about the whole uh, governments doing takedown of ransomware groups. That was a TechStrong gang topic. Yeah, that was that was a, a TechStrong gang discussion. You're right. Um, and I'm forgetting the ransomware group that they took down now. Uh, I'll, I could tell you in a minute. but <laughs> We'll, we'll find it. But what was interesting is they made a huge announcement that it was taken down, and then two days later, it's back up. Yeah. <laughs> the whack-a-mole. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this is the problem when you have nation states that, I, I, if they don't outwardly support these gangs, they tie they they turn a blind eye to them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and, and it was like I mean we were discussing about you know. They're going after the big ones, right? Because it's sort of like going after right. Kingpin. You were talking about the, the Godfather earlier. You know, and then there's, you know, thousands, millions, billions of small, you know, medium and small things happening that are probably leveraging a lot of the same tools, right? But yep. um, Lockbit was the name of Lockbit. It. That's it. You're right. Yeah. Lockbit. That I remember. And it's back. And And so... Look, I applaud the government for their efforts. I applaud, you know, a lot of the companies that get involved in this. But this just gives you a you know, peek into how insidious these these and, and deep rooted these things are. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. You know, it was interesting. I woke up this morning as I often do really early. It was about five five thirty in the morning, and um, I checked my email just because I don't know if something's the matter with me. Um, but I, I checked my email and I got a message from Google because my son's email, I'm the emergency contact, I guess, or whatever. And Google sent out an email from my son's account that says, you're the emergency contact. We've seen his password on the dark web. Change your password immediately with disabling the account. Uh -huh. So at first, being the cyber pro that I am, I said, oh, this is a fish. Uh -huh. um, yeah. You know, quick here, click this link, son. <laughs> yeah. So I went to log in to his email, and sure enough, it was real Google. And I got to tell you the truth, I was pretty amazed that Google. I mean, it, it must be automated, right? I yeah. can't imagine there's people doing that. But kudos to Google for doing. It was a regular Gmail account too. This isn't corporate. Um, kudos to Google. For keeping an eye on things bad like things that. were happening on it, like it had been compromised and emails they being sent out. They just said we or just said that the suspected. password for this account was found in a. Oh, the password for this account was found in a breach. Okay, it was contained in a breach. Huh. Well, they shouldn't, in theory, know your password, so they must be taking that data from that breach and saying, "Let me run it against our authentication and see if." It's either that or they're here. just saying, hey, this breach was able to get a hold of username and passwords. And when they saw the username, yeah. they they assumed the password was too. 
But that's okay. I applaud them for doing it. I wish every email provider did that. Mm -hmm. okay. I, 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 Good for them. Makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, you know, you know, ignorance is not bliss. It's just yep. ignorance. <laughs> it's just ignorance, and it, and you know, <laughs> you can have an opinion all you want, but when it's ignorant, it's ignorant. Exactly. All right, know. Mitch. <laughs> I think that that does it for me on Security Boulevard I, Chats this I week. I think we've hit several nails on the head, or at least taken some swings. So I had a good time I had doing fun. it. I had <laughs> it fun. It's been great doing it. Well, definitely check out, um, you know, if you're listening to this podcast or you're seeing it for the first time on one of our websites, um, particularly Security Boulevard, but check us out. We've got a bunch of podcasts that are available around DevOps, Cybersecurity, Cloud Native Now, AI. We talk, talk about a lot of those. So yep. we're really enjoying producing this content and helping share some of the really, you know, a lot of great stuff on our, on our websites and we like to highlight some of it. So that's a real privilege to do that. Yep. Well, and if you like sort of crazy old uncles talking like this, you should also check out Tech Strong Gang. <laughs> Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday every week, where we're joined by Mike Vizard and Sharon Florentine, Amanda Rizzini, and a whole bunch of friends at TechStrong discussing cyber and DevOps and cloud native and AI and transformation and the rest. It's all good stuff. Well, thanks for joining okay. us, everybody. Uh, this is Mitch Ashley. And Alan Schimmel. Thank you for joining and listening to us on Security Boulevard Chats. Bye, everybody.